is the Infinity Summit Group. Truth. Passion. Success. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Infinity Summit Group podcast. Today, we'll be talking about whole life policies, why to get them, all the ins and outs, yada, yada, everything we uh, we know about them. I'm Noah. Hi, I'm Xavier. I'm Logan. I'm Jesse. Welcome back, everybody. Um, so, first thing about whole life policies, well, first thing about life insurance in general, what it does is when you die, um, whoever you choose to be your beneficiary gets a payout um, and that, that payout is up to 30 times your yearly income. So for example, we'll just, we'll just say a guy makes 40 K a year. Uh, the most that he can get insured for it's like a whole life thousand. I think that's about where I, what I make. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think that's almost exactly what I, my policy was. Well then, How? then yes. <laughs> Something like 600,000. And that was, that was the maximum for you. Oh, okay. I think. How, Let's see, 40, How are 000? you so much more ahead? On what? For your death benefit? What's your death benefit? Mine right now is 486. Mine was like 590. Did you cap it though, Log? And were you guys through the same company? Uh, the I think we're America one or one America. One America? Yeah, yeah, one. <laughs> yeah. Our stuff was pretty similar, but it was. I don't have no. All the info yeah, that would make sense because my what I paid to it is higher. By like yes, bucks. In your, I don't in know your if you maxed it out. Nicotine. I didn't. I, oh, I, was, I didn't have the nicotine. I think your dad said I could go to like twelve hundred, but I was at nine hundred, and that's about really what I can manage. Nine hundred thousand. No, no nine hundred a month. Yeah. Oh, well, so this. I could have had a bigger. It says for a guy who makes forty thousand a year, um, you can insure up to one point two million. Then what was? Because that's how much I make for death benefit. Your dad was only saying like six, under six, six hundred thousand. I thought. Is that in a year? I thought that's what you start you with. You reach up to that? No. So if you make 40000 a year, you can insure with whole life policies, you can uh, insure yeah, up to, to max, yeah. 30 years. It's like the the equivalent of 30 years of your work that you got to replace your income for. Yeah. So $1.2 million would be the max. Yeah, so um, that might have just been the max that you could do based on what you could pay. Likely. That's that's what I had to do too because my, I mean, my death benefit was... Four hundred thousand. It wasn't it wasn't super high, but that was just based on what I could pay and what I wanted to pay. So fair enough. Anyway, yeah, that's a uh, that's right, that's what okay. whole life policies are used for. Essentially, you have this life insurance for your whole life. It's not just a term. Um, you keep it for I think until you're a certain age, over a hundred, or for one twenty one, I believe. 121 for that myself. Sounds about right. Yeah. Sounds right. So what does that mean? Like it, it stops at 121? Right. So if you were to live till 121, they would just pay you out because at that point, your cash value would equal your death benefit. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you go to the hole and die. <laughs> <laughs> and get lots of money. Here's some yeah. money. Now die. Right. Well, your family would, but. Um, well, if you were alive. That's true. You would get it's possible, <laughs> I suppose, at this point, huh? And if people, if they keep being able to make artificial things, could work, but you'd just be a cyborg, all, eh, iron lung. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they can grow body parts. That's true. They do it with hearts. They've gnarly. cloned cow farms. This is way off subject, so I apologize. That's real. Look, look it up. Cloned cow. Well, they cloned a sheep and stopped. They can make new a new you. <laughs> It's Why be you when you can be new? <laughs> <laughs> Upgrade. But anyways, upgrades. The, okay, and we'll, we're gonna we're gonna follow this tangent for just a second because okay, perfect. I'll look it up then. No, if you get if you get cloned, there's no way they can transfer your soul right now. That's what no. I can't. They, they can't too. transfer you. They can't transfer your experiences right now. No, but organs and yeah. Shiz. As far as your DNA, it would be like having an identical twin. Just a copy. That'd be wild. But could you, you could program it. Like, would it have like a... You'd have to send it through all the same experiences at all the same times to program their personality. It just wouldn't work. No, you couldn't do <laughs> that. No. 
Yeah, it'd have to be the same person. So you can't clone they, a soul. Yeah, they would they would have a different soul, so it'd be a different person. Very interesting. Researchers have been cloning livestock since 1996, and it's legal. Like you could get genetically modified cows and all that. The way they just look ripped. It's real, <laughs> real weird stuff. Cloning's not legal in America. Yeah, they stopped. I swear. No, they Co- did for a bit. Cow farms, dude. I don't know if it is now. Yeah, it's allowed. It's weird. Jesus Christ. After like so Dolly the fed. Sheep or something. Well, let's, get like, some ah, fa- let's get some facts. Yeah, let's yeah get some we facts. sound like freaking Alex Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dolly the Sheep. I remember they were all, mm, ethics declare this not right. Yes. And then I don't know what happened from there. There are currently eight states uh, that prohibit cloning for any purpose these are four states arizona india louisiana and michigan that ex- expressingly prohibit state funding of human cloning for any purpose so eight states out of the u.s say no and the human? rest are okay with it <laughs> and that's <laughs> human yeah. Yeah. yeah other that's things seems cloning. fine uh, like a sheep i don't know you're gonna eat that well, yeah I, I, it didn't not necessarily human cloning for the eight states, four out of the... Oh, the four states were specifically human. Yes, four states were specifically no human. Well, uh, okay. Why is it only four? It seems rather <laughs> yeah. low. <laughs> it's okay to clone look, these other look, states, look, though. Whatever. Ripped cows. That's real. Yeah. I have seen those. Oh, That's, that thing's that, bluff. It's unnatural. <laughs> it's GMO cow. They're GMO cows. It's gross. They do that pig What's well, the same stuff they've been doing with plants for years and years and years? That's fine. Yeah, yeah but it just looks weird because it's a cow. Oh, because it's a living... <laughs> a big tomato is acceptable. It's a mammal. <laughs> a big, big potato. potato. <laughs> I've, okay. I've noticed that the bigger these fruits and vegetables are getting, the less flavorful they're getting. They're more watered down. Mm-hmm. That makes sense because how would they get bigger? You just got to give them more water, right? I mean, yeah. How and they And they keep the same nutrition or less. It's stupid. Like a one of those little crab apples or whatever from a homegrown tree. So good. Oh yeah. The stuff you got from the store that's just a huge apple, you get the same nutritional value. It's just more agua, more sweet juice. I know I'm one of those sweet dudes juice. that goes to the farmers market, but I would like eventually to like do most of my like produce shopping at a farmers market. I think that would be so cool because it's like yeah. grown by farmers. Yeah, it it is still like I believe 99% of the corn we got today is GMO because the corn as we know it did not look like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, they say, I'm pretty positive, this is what our teacher told us in high school or something, that any kind of corn's GMO because it's humans have been crossbreeding it for a thousand years or so, you know. So I'd believe it. Well, well what exactly is GMO? Genetically, genetically, genetically modified, modified organism. Yeah. Oh, okay. So if you if you had corn... And you had another corn, and you're like, oh, these corns can make a baby because I like the way that this one is yellow and this one is sweeter. Bam. And then you get yellow sweet corn. That's GMO. Why is that wrong? It's not. It's, it's, okay. not. it's, it's just, like, it's just like, called like, genetically modified, and it has a bad connotation. I okay. think it has a bad connotation because people are thinking all science-y, and they're all pff, yeah. changing that, DNAs. And I think yeah, that's, that's what, what I'm thinking. They make this like corn all in the lab. Ke- chemicals are like stabbing into the like plants and stuff. I'm like, I don't yeah. like that. But if it's... It's like crossbreeding. That's fine, you know, with some things. Sometimes, sometimes it can mess things up. Yeah, and this tangent has gone far, <laughs> so far off of whole life policies. Get here. If you are GMO, I'm pretty sure you can't get a whole life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm genetically modified. <laughs> I'm extra swole. Um, okay, so a couple of aspects about whole life policies. First one is that their cash value is essentially equity. Can you explain that a little more? Yeah, like, uh, like for example, my my equity is twenty two hundred bucks right now, right? Right. So that's how much I could pull out in cash. Mm hmm. So cash value is equity. Okay. So so if you were to close your policy, you would get twenty two hundred dollars, or you can take a loan out against those twenty two hundred dollars. Yeah. How does that work? Taking the loan out against it with the twenty, like twenty two. Do you just take a twenty two hundred dollar loan out, or can you take well, more? How does no? That... You, you can take only... less. Less. Okay. That's yeah. Right. You can take... you match it? I don't know. You might be able to match it. That's what Dad was saying. You could match it. Just can't go above it. Oh, okay. okay. So you can match your cash value in what you get in loans out of the policy. Yeah. Essentially, that's what I understood. So oh, if okay. you're taking the loan out, I know you guys have explained this before, but. How do you pay that back? Is it just paying it back 
from like it's like a regular loan and they're regular loan. and i think they're five percent it's just your policy plus another payment yep exactly okay. Okay. just like a regular loan then so okay. the minimum you got to pay back on it is the interest yeah um which is five percent yeah and then you got to pay back the principal as well if you want to have access to that cash value again or have it in your in your policy right okay. it doesn't take anything out of your policy your cash value still stays there and makes interest at about four percent and then you're taking out a loan at five percent okay so net net use of that money is about one percent but don't think about it like that it's still a five percent loan <laughs> so if you are borrowing right yeah do you get a fix how much you're paying each month or do they just kind of tell you you got to pay this much month monthly to pay it back no you set your own terms okay mm-hmm. i was wondering because i think can it affect your credit score no, right? This has no connection no. to your credit at all. Yeah. Zero? Because this... because it's a hard money loan against your hard money. It's hard, just okay, like it's them giving money. your money. Yeah, that, yeah Just okay. like the government has nothing to do with it. Like if you die, your tax or your death benefit is tax free. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they can't they don't the, have their fingers in this basically. Yeah, this is all. between This you is and God. private. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's private companies. Okay. This is something that they said it doesn't count against your like debt to income ratio too when you take out those loans, right? Yeah, so correct. Then banks will give you more loans. Is that how that works? Yeah. Really? So if you have loans against your policies, banks banks don't see that. So they can't know if you owe money to them, mm-hmm. like the yeah. other people. Yep. That's kind of cool. I like. Yeah. That. So it's off the radar loans. Another reason why get? they're good. Yeah. And that yeah. it's private. Exactly. Um. So that cash value in there is. A certain amount of the money you put in, uh, an, a small portion of that money goes towards purchasing more death benefit, which is the main function of this policy, right? It is life insurance. So when you die, someone gets a big payout so they don't have to take care of, but they don't have to struggle, right? Mm-hmm. So that's the, that's the big thing with it is the cash value is part of what you put in. It's a large part, but also a small portion goes towards buying more death benefit and over the life of the insurance policy your death benefit will grow with the policy Mm. so as your cash value grows your death benefit grows as well okay and then before you start on that i know this Uh, keeps popping up in my head how do they protect against like people killing other people for their life insurance money you know what i mean fraud right it's just illegal right but do they like insurance fraud they've done that in the past people like there's there's videos of it and stuff. Okay. And so, they, don't they do like a big old investigation if you die? That's what I was going to say. If you got a lot of money on their end. Well, yeah, especially it. especially if you're murdered and it's not like, oh, they died peacefully in their sleep. You know, it's like, yeah. no, this person was murdered. Then, of course, they're going to investigate for any sort of insurance fraud, especially if you got a fat policy sitting on you. Yeah, that's a large amount of money. Yeah. yeah. There's no way they wouldn't. Mm-hmm. I don't think they do it for suicide either. They will. They will now? After two years. You got to have the policy for two years so that you can't just get it and suicide. Yeah. By that time, you're going to be a different state of mind. Yeah. I asked about this because I was, <laughs> I was curious. So what's this I was curious. I was like, so they don't cover suicides, do they? And I was like, no, after two years of having the policy active, then yes. Is that the same wow. with not, not whole life, just a regular one? I don't know about the regular term. Yeah, that's, um, that's I'd awesome. imagine if it's through the same companies, it would be the same. But it probably varies right, right. company to company. And what what's that book that your dad had me read? Do you, you guys remember? Oh, um, yeah, it's Is it Heads, Heads I, I Win, win tells, tells You Lose. Yeah. Okay, by, I just I want to link that. Yes, by Patrick Donahoe. Is it on Audible? Yes. Okay, I'll perfect. It on there. Um, yeah. The reason I was that. saying they'll like whatever you put in, they'll do the exact amount for the loan or whatever. Yeah. It's because for the Tennessee house that I'm going to buy next year. Yeah, I was talking to Dad. If I save up 10k, and he said, "Yeah, they'll do the 10k for the 20 down or whatever." Oh, I okay, said, okay, that's cool. Because I should have it by then. Yeah, but I don't know. That's just wait. So, but he might you have, have to misunderstood have like the question. Like 10k in your savings plus the 10k in your policy. No, like, or if you have 10k in your policy, then they'll give you a twenty thousand dollar loan. Yeah, they'll match your 10k to equal 20k that you could like. Low now, I guess. Well, I, that, I'm confused. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to me. I might just be special, but that's what I understood. Well, 
so if you're using the 10k in your policy plus the 10k loan then you have zero collateral right your whole yeah thing no i'm, you're I'm saying like gone. you you have the 10k so then they'll match the 10k yeah so you're not gonna i be guess able... that wouldn't make sense huh yeah, yeah. The, so the 10k you have in your cash value of your policy if you borrow against it you can borrow up to ten thousand dollars but you have to keep this as cash value in your policy but you have the ten thousand dollars to use so in essence you have twenty thousand yeah. dollars but ten thousand of it has to stay in the policy as cash value earning interest and the other ten thousand is going to go towards whatever investment opportunity so he probably just didn't understand the question yeah oops <laughs> <laughs> but they're not going to loan you more than you have collateral for not at that low of interest rate yeah um Okay, but it is that is a fantastic system, and there's other people you know that will have collateral. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah, can we'll go in on stuff like that. We'll, we'll get it either way. Yeah, exactly. Um, another thing about these policies is that they have dividends, and these dividends have been paid for some of these whole life policies uh, since before the Civil War. Um, hundred hundred forty years for the company that I'm working through. And then there's another one. So uh, the company I'm working through is One America. Yeah. That's who I think all of us have our policies through. Yeah. Um, And Penn Mutual, which is another whole life policy company, um, they've been around for over 170 years providing dividends. So. And what are the dividends for the listeners? Um, It's about. Well, I had a dividend. It was like 40 bucks. So I had my money in. Isn't it every year or every month? Yeah, so it's yearly, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's yeah. yearly dividends. So what what I paid in was six thousand, about sixty three hundred bucks, and they gave me forty two dollars in dividends um, for the year, and that's just extra money on top of the interest that they pay me. The interest they pay me is about four percent, so they. They take that money and just roll with it. Give me some extra cashing at the end of the year. So are they just putting that back into your uh, cash value, basically? Yeah. Well, that's kind of cool. So they, they add the 4%, which is, by the way, any any growth you have in your policy is tax-free. Tax-free growth because you put pre-tax dollars in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that uh, dividend at the end of the year just goes straight into your cash value, and you get also the 4% interest on top of it because they use your money um, like other payouts to, right when people die huh? like for when people die is that what they use it well, for well they would use they would use some of it for that but they'd also use it for growing because they're growing their assets at a certain amount with your money right. you get dividends and interest off of that that's how it's been they're just just like a privatized banking kind of thing which is definitely the way to go oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, it says the whole life is payable to age 121. Oh, okay. That's just what it is. Yeah. Um, So we've already talked about these loans, taking them against your whole life policy cash value. It is very beneficial when you're looking for opportunities out there because then instead of having to use your capital, um, you use what's called OPM or other people's money. Um, It's not your own money, and you're taking it out at a very very low interest rate like i said about five percent um and that's that's money that you can match up to your cash value and use in any opportunities you see fit as long as you can pay it back Do, so does anyone know how long it takes for them to get the loan to you yeah it takes about a week that's quick wow. yeah that's cool yeah. okay you, you say i want money and they say okay here <laughs> you go here you are they don't need to check your credit nothing they just send it to you if you got the cash value to back it bam it's pretty freaking cool. Mm-hmm. Do they just send you a check or is it like yeah, hard cash? Yeah, they send you a check. Okay. Um, like that's direct, cool. Yeah. I like mean, a legit check or direct, direct deposit? That shit I'm is. pretty sure it's a, a legit check. They might direct deposit, probably depending on what you check on the box, you know? Fair enough. That makes sense. Um, but yeah, I, I know you can get 10K in about a week, week and a half. Pretty easy. That's pretty darn sweet. Yeah. No questions asked. Just, okay. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. It's nice. Very nice use of your money. Um, let's talk about the death benefit growth a little bit. Like I said, for every dollar you put in, there's going to be a certain percentage taken out. 
um, and quote unquote paid into your death benefit um, or paid to the company to increase your death benefit. So for example, with that, with that uh, 6,300 I put in, I had the, <laughs> the extra insurance I bought cost, cost me $312. For what? Uh, of that of that sixty three hundred I put in, which which was probably closer to sixty six hundred because they took the three hundred out. Okay. Um, put sixty six hundred in last year. No, this year. Yeah, uh, this year, and they took three hundred twelve dollars of that, and that turned into an extra forty six thousand seven hundred dollars of death benefit. So it's very very cheap to buy death benefit in these policies. It's very nice. So that took my it took my policy just from just under four hundred thousand to uh, just under four hundred fifty thousand. That's sweet. Yeah, um, very very quick it happens. It's nice, and like I said, it's just a small percentage. It's nothing nothing major. Uh, when I was when I was putting it in, I was a little confused about the cash value, but you no, know, they take whatever you put in. They're throwing a little bit of that uh, above and beyond your base. So you have a base premium that you pay, and that's that's going to be paying for your um, death benefit to start, right? So I start with about four hundred thousand, and my base premium pays for that. So I pay into that for however many years. Um, it's like seven. Yeah, something like something that. Like seven years, yeah. Five, between five and seven. Yeah, so you pay into it for f- between five and seven years until your policy starts. I think becomes just automatic, right, and is able to pay its own premium. Mm, I think so. Over over time, if you keep capping it out, essentially your dividends and your interest you'll make off the policy will pay for your base premiums. Something like that. Yeah. So, um, it's over time it becomes a self sustaining system if you need it to be. Right. It's pretty cool, and you can pay these policies by the month. You can pay them um, every six months. Just one big chunk in a year you know Mm -hmm. um it's real easy to just i mean they they work with you that's awesome just don't miss any payments (laughs) yeah (laughs) i've heard horror stories people miss a payment it's gone wait close it their whole like their policy damn Mm -hmm. or they take triple yes (laughs) (laughs) exactly um so these these policies, the reason why we chose whole life policies, and these are, this is because of the wealth strategy that we're approaching, and and the way that we're approaching um, our wealth creation is we're looking for high liquidity, we're looking for um, lots of money that we can invest in opportunities, and we're looking for, again that so important of things is life insurance as much life insurance as you can buy because when you pass away you want your family well taken care of and you want to give them a springboard for the next generation right so that's uh those are the main main ideas that I, that I want to uh, pursue in my life and so the whole life policy provides that it's way liquid uh, you're able to play around with the death benefit you've always got that cash value um, and you can take loans against it. It's super easy to use, not a not a hard system at all. Uh, as compared to like a 401k or an IRA, where you send your money, it's it's uh, locked away till you're 65 and a half or whatever, um, 50, I think it's 59. 55 and a half. Maybe 59. 55. I thought it was 59 okay. with penalties, and then 65 with no penalties, something like that. Okay. Yeah, something stupid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or yeah, and then if you don't take it by seven, if you don't take it out by seventy-two, or don't start taking it, then it's also penalties. Something like that. that yeah, doesn't so make any sense. That's ridiculous. It's fifty-five or older without penalty. Oh, okay. So anything before that's like ten percent right off the top. Just takes it right off there. Plus taxes. Plus taxes. So they tax 401ks and... Uh, 401ks are taxed after. So when you're in a higher tax bracket, later in life is when they tax you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so what's, tra- what's a 403b? Uh, just another retirement plan. 
Okay. We'll have to so, research it and talk more in depth about it and why it's a bad idea. Correct me if I'm wrong, but retirement plans are basically for people who want to work for the rest of their lives and then get a big chunk of money at the end. No, they don't get a big chunk of money. They don't. Well, what do they get? So they get they not get a big chunk. <laughs> if they get anything, then it's a very small amount each month. It's like a payout every month. That sounds ridiculous. Um, the, well, you just watch where the money's going. It's going into the pockets of the government because they don't charge them. They don't charge them tax now when they're putting it away. When they have all the tax deductions of kids, um, homeowners, all this married, um, and they wait until they're old when they may or may not have kids in the house still, may or may not be sole providers, they may or may not be married. All these things that change and change your tax bracket and increase your tax bracket. So when you're ready to take that out, you get shafted. <laughs> and this money is invested in the stock market. So every time there's a correction in the stock market, 401ks lose so hard hmm. every time. Um, I, I was talking to a guy just in March. He was talking about his retirement plan. Um, I believe he had a 401k. And he said, yeah, I lost a... He said, I lost $120,000 of my oh. retirement last week. That's brutal. <laughs> He's just a sad guy. That make, makes you sick. Because he had a lot of money in the oil industry, and they crashed hard this year. Yeah, they, they did. did. So, we talked about this. Is it because the podcast. Yeah, uh, we, we have talk talked about this. Yeah. Is it because there's too much oil or what? There they, was. They were trying to. They were paying people to take oil. Huh. Yeah. Well, they, they, yeah, they did more well, than Wasn't they there like a whole situation? A war to... Or, yeah, there was a war over oil. They yeah. were, like, trying to outproduce each other, and then there was way too much. <laughs> yeah, they, they were, like, right in the middle of trying to outproduce each other. Then COVID hit, so no one was buying oil, so they just made way too much, and then they had nowhere to store it. So they were paying, paying people to take it so that they have to store it. Huh. So, I don't know. That was a nasty Weird. situation. Still recovering. I, I was looking at the oil industry the other day, and uh, the stock that I was watching at the time is like less than half of what it was before COVID. It, it, yeah, they got hit so hard. Yeah, COVID's been a fat L. Really. <laughs> I'll tell you what the next fat L is, Tesla. Yeah. Yeah, but they're going down. What? I was just not thinking yet. 2021, not. <clears throat> just thinking the year. But let yeah. me uh, <laughs> let me rip some, some of my research facts upon y'all. So Tesla has increased their value um, 18,000% since their inception in 2010. That's that's Dang. how high they're valued. Um, they are worth more than it's like Ford, Toyota, BMW, tons of tons of car companies. Like I think there was eight to ten other car companies. Their valuations, six is Tesla is – just so overinflated right now. Their PE ratio, it's a profits to earning ratio. Essentially, the way that I had it explained that was the easiest to understand was profits to earning ratio is how many years at current production it would take a company to meet up to the amount that's invested in them, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a big company, GE, that I was looking at. Um, their PE ratio is seven. That makes sense for a business. It takes them seven years at production right now to get to where their investors have invested that much money, right? So they would earn that much in seven years. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Uh, a lot of the tech companies are way high right now. Zoom I was looking at is a little over 200, their PE ratio right now. And Tesla is over 1,200. It would take them 1,200 years. To get up <laughs> to get up to what their valuation is. Well, at current. So... At current, at current, order. yeah, at current production. So, let me let me also put this into perspective for you. Tesla last year produced two hundred fifty thousand cars. This year they're shooting for five hundred thousand. Their valuation, like I said, is worth about um, another eight car companies combined. Um, these are big car companies. You know, Ford, BMW, like I said, Toyota, all of them. Um, Toyota alone produced eleven million cars last year. Ooh. So Tesla is. So overvalued, it's insane. Does mm. investing in a Tesla? Do they use that money for like SpaceX and stuff? That's what I was wondering. No, this is this is the Tesla car, car company. Just the cars. That's all. That's all it is right now. Hmm. It's te Tesla Incorporated. I think is the car company. 
So um, people are paying for the idea, basically. People people are paying for the idea that Tesla is going to keep rising. Tesla has quintupled this year. And it did a stock split and is still quintuple. It's disgusting. Like <laughs> That's like seven times this year. Seven, seven X, how much Tesla is worth on the stock market, you know. Um, and they're releasing on the S&P 500 December 21st. That's predicted to um, destabilize the S&P. Like, it's predicted to be the atom bomb in the stock market, essentially. Hmm. Um, so we'll, we'll so see like, where it goes. What, what do you mean by that? Like, depression hitting or what? No. So what happens when uh, Tesla goes in the S&P is Tesla is going to be worth 17% of the S&P's value straight away. Bam. That's what they're predicting. And all these major companies, all these like Vanguard, Fidelity, all that, these um, investment firms, we'll say, need to rebalance their books, taking their money out of other S&P stocks to balance them with Tesla stocks and throwing them at Tesla. So what's going to happen is a massive shift of wealth towards Tesla. They're predicting another $100 billion going into Tesla. And so it's uh, basically predicted to make a bunch of other stocks in the S&P just go way down. So we'll see. And then as soon as the S&P starts going down, then everyone's going to be jumping out of the other markets too. Mm -hmm. It's predicted to be quite a splash in the pond. (laughs) But it'll be interesting. No real value to back it up either. No, Elon Musk earlier this year said our stock is way too high. That was about two hundred bucks, I think, maybe two fifty, and it's about six thirty last I checked. It it's gotta be perfect. People are conflating things, cause like Elon Musk talks about his Neuralink and SpaceX, and that's all him. Yeah, that's all his stuff. So people are probably conflating things, being like, oh, this is all the same. I'm investing in the brand of Elon Musk. They might of be Tesla. They might be. At least the regular people that are investing. The sad thing about that is, is just <laughs> they're going to lose their shirts yeah. mm-hmm. if, they, if they're if they jumping on the bandwagon. Tesla, I mean, there there's some companies out there saying that Tesla could hit 2500 per share. Oh, my goodness. I would be amazed if it broke 1000 Amazed. Um, personally, I don't think it'll get over 800 I think that's about where it'll cap out if it doesn't cap out sooner. Um, and the just just based on all the evidence, there's so many things out there saying, yeah, Tesla's overvalued, overvalued. Um, it's, what was I going to say? It's, I don't remember. I'll remember later, though. Basically, Tesla's a bubble. It's being called the Tesla bubble. And it's about to pop. Yeah. Nobody knows when it's going to pop, but when it does, it's going to be a catastrophic pop. <laughs> so that's it's scary. That's what 401ks are invested into is the <laughs> stock market. So if you like uh, if you like the boom and bust cycle and want to throw all your money at that and lose half about every 7 years, which is a market cycle, then uh, feel free. Speaking of bubbles <laughs> popping. So we have the think housing market whatever, you know. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. So in March, that's when rent forgiveness or whatever stops, right? Not forgiveness or deferral. Yeah. How does that work for banks? So they've got the, the, the renters deferring their rent. How does the owner do that? The landlord? How does... Can they don't. They, they don't? See, no. Landlords can't default on their loans. That's why I was like, I don't... Ha, this screws rent landlords. Yeah. It's yeah. going to bone how can you everybody. Not, not yeah. pay your landlord. You have to, you know? Yep. Well, then you can't legally kick them out. And what do you do when you're a landlord with 10 homes that you got a $2,000 payment on? Oh, what? you go broke. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Just thinking, there's no way. Yeah, We're all be, losing. Be cruddy. Not me. I'm getting learnt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm really trying to learn hard about all the stock market stuff right now. Because when that bubble does pop, there's going to be huge opportunity to jump in, throw some money at it. So if I learn now, I'm going to hopefully profit. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Go where the opportunities are. Yeah, and right now I'm just playing around with some options. It's called stock options, basically where you say, yeah, this stock is going to be worth this much on this day. And then if it's 
if you're right or above, below, whatever, there's a, there's a lot to it. Essentially, I can purchase a stock at a set price up to a certain day. So I can purchase a stock. I say, this stock, I'm going to I'm gonna buy this stock option at a dollar per share. Um, that means if it goes, well, we'll say a dollar per share until, we'll say December 18th, right? Mm-hmm. So if it goes above a dollar per share, I can still purchase these stocks at a dollar per share. Okay, so if it goes price. below a dollar per share, that's my option is a dollar per share. Oh, okay. So you're kind of like locked so, into that price. Well, I'm locked into that price as far as that option goes. I can still purchase stocks uh, through that company if I want to because that's outside of my options that I bought. The option that you buy, though, costs a certain amount of money. So for one of my options, it cost me 60 bucks to buy the option. So the stock has to rise a certain amount in order for me to break even on that and then a certain amount more for me to gain a profit, right? Right. So on one of my options right now, if I were to buy stocks, I'd be losing money and the other one I'd be gaining money. They're mm. doing they're doing different uh, things in the market. So it's very interesting. I went with very cheap options. I think one was 60 bucks and the other was 140. Oh, that's really nice. cheap options. So if I... If I don't use these options at all, then they'll expire and I just lose that 60 bucks or I lose that 140 and don't do anything. But I'm not going to lose my shirt by buying 100 stocks and watching it drop, you know? Yeah. So options are very, very interesting. Is, I'm, I need to get more educated on them for is sure. Is this through Robinhood? Yeah. Okay. I'll have to look into that too. Yeah. I opened, I opened up options trading. It's, it's a, uh, something you got to like, go and do some terms and conditions, extra stuff besides just buying stocks. It's an it's extra a, feature. It's a derivative of stocks, which are a derivative of a company. Yeah. So <laughs> it's... Uh, inception. Exactly. It's money inception. It's very interesting. Hmm. But anyway, stocks are fun to play around with. I wouldn't recommend uh, relying on them for a retirement plan at all. Don't put all your money <clears throat> in the same place, basically. Yes. Definitely not. I've, I've got, well, I personally, I think I have five, five places I keep my money. Yeah. You got, you got cash, you got commodities, you got whole life policies. Right now I have a tiny bit in stocks just playing around and then you got your savings account. So. Guns is a good spot too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess that's commodities in a sense. Yeah. Uh, not silver the only, such. the only thing about that would be the liquidity. How liquid are guns? They're fairly liquid. Yeah. Right now. Yes, right now. Especially right now. Yes, especially right now. They're very liquid. Um, One could say the same about cars right now. Really? Our trucks are worth more now than probably when we bought them. Why is that? Can't be mad about that. Because trucks are due to COVID, in very high demand and low supply. A minute to find mine. Like they said, that was. Oh yeah, yours. Yours was probably expensive. It was very probably expensive. a bit overpriced, but they yeah. said you're lucky to get one because they're oh, yeah. gone like day of. <laughs> yeah. But why Why does COVID affect truck use? Because the the company shut down. Oh. They stopped production. Oh. Or at least slowed it down. Right. So, because they can't get parts from there, from all over the world where they need to make a car. And so it just slows everything down, just like in, in the uh, garage door industry right now. A normal door, like if you're getting a custom order, you're you're maybe three or four weeks, mm-hmm. maybe, and that's you know that's fairly quick. It's very normal. Right now, they're between seven and nine weeks. Oh, okay. To get any any door, I mean, not that, just custom. It's affected like every business, like even packages in the mail. Yeah. Nobody's getting their packages on time. Yeah, Prime's doing pretty good. Well, Amazon. I'm amazed. Yeah. Amazon, of course, but yeah, <laughs> Amazon's like their own entity though. They're yeah. They're their own government. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> their own country. They're doing pretty good. Their stock's been rising too. Yeah, like 200% or something crazy. Yeah, their stock price is over $3,000. That one makes sense though. Yeah. Amazon is it's worth a lot. probably the only one right now that makes sense. Yeah. That's super high. I w- when DoorDash had its IP- IPO, I thought that one was going to be super high until I looked into the company and they've been losing money since inception. So it's just like, okay. That doesn't make sense. I heard Uber Eats was like that too. They just don't make money doing that. Yeah. And right now during COVID, they should be making the most money. They should be turning a profit if a profit's possible in that industry, and it's not. As of as of right now with the system they have, right? 
Do you think it's because more people want to go out and like do curbside, so they go pick it up themselves, just to get out of the house, maybe? Well, it's if possible. It's from no, because their their sense. money, the money they're making and bringing in, has been way more this year than any other previous year. But they're still losing. But money. they're still losing. It's like, ugh. if any year, it should be this year. When you're making a profit. I'm wondering where they're losing money, though, because you're just paying drivers to drive, right? Mm-hmm. And they pretty much get a cut, and you get the tip. Yeah. they just been running their company at a loss since inception, mm-hmm. meaning they're they're growing, growing their base faster than they're bringing in profits, essentially. I see. Yeah. Um, which is an unstable business model yeah. as far as... As far as that goes, I mean, it is a tech company technically, and they they do that a lot. We'll see if it survives. I just know the IPO was listed way high, way higher than the pre-IPO, uh, about double I think, and then it's going down steadily. I think today it went down thirteen dollars or so. What's IPO? What does that uh, mean? IPO is initial public offering. That's oh, okay. that's when they first offer their stock to the public. Right. Yeah. And door, uh, Airbnb, like we were seeing, has been dropping as well because their their pre-IPO was first between 44 and $50 a share. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, oh, maybe it, it looks like it's more. This is about two days before IPO. And they said, oh, it's going to be releasing between 55 and $60 a share. And then it released at, it was 100 and like 40? 40 something a share. And it went up to 165 in seconds. Just yeah, but shot right then up. And it was going down. And though. then it's and then it's going down. Yeah. So right now, right now, Airbnb is at. Yeah, let's see what their shares is, are at. So Airbnb, Airbnb is at 126 dollars a share, and they cents. they got up to 165. That was last Wednesday, Thursday. Last Thursday. So in three days of trading, they're down, <laughs> coming up on 40 bucks. So it's pretty rough. Yeah. But that's that's what happens with a lot of IPOs, especially if they're overpriced like that. It's just insane. But right now with how hot the stock market is, everybody and their dog can invest, you know, especially thanks to apps like E-Trade and Robinhood. Everybody can do it. Mm-hmm. And Everything is just shooting up. It's crazy. Um, but basically, you don't want your 401k. You don't want your retirement from this world to be dependent on such a thing as the stock market. Yeah, it's just not a good idea. Mm-hmm. And like IRAs and Roth IRAs, you have a little more control. But again, with any of it, you got to be a fairly competent investor in the stock market in it in real estate, in gold and silver, all this, in order to make those um, retirement plans work. Whereas whole life policies, you just throw money at it. It may be a little less return, but my plan is to get returns from other sources, not just my whole life policy. Right. So That's the goal. Exactly. Exactly. And the returns from that hopefully will sustain me for, I mean, for a good long while if needs be. Mm Mm-hmm. In fact, I might be doing this this coming year. I might have to do a uh, where I can survive two years without paying for my policy. So this next year, I'm going to pay for the whole year. Bam, right up front. You can get it done. Just throw a chunk of change. Exactly. That's what I'm going to try to do, or just as fast as possible. Right. Get get this whole year paid for quick, Mm -hmm. and then for the next year, I can take a loan out against my policy and pay off that whole year's policy. Oh wow. Mm Mm-hmm. That would be interesting. And so I'd be just paying the interest on that and whatever payment for that loan there is. Um, but I could essentially have two years without having to worry about it too much. That would be cool. Yeah. That's that's the hope while I'm doing the flight school thing. So Okay. Yeah. Takes a little less stress. That's if I have to. I'm hoping I don't have to. That I can just keep paying it, keep maxing it out, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's the plan that way. Um. Now, what have we used these policies for so far? Nothing yet. Nothing yet. The plan is to use it to as a down payment on real estate investments. That's that's the plan. Um, 
and or if the if the price is right, the stock market's right, whatever, I might take out some money to use on that as well. It's um, ba- basically any investing any opportunity. Any opportunity, yep. yep. And remember the first rule of investing, don't lose money. Don't lose money. So I can't call my stock findings investments yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not till I get more learnt. Um, and, yeah, I wanted to bring this up too for a lot of the young people that want to get uh, – a life insurance policy, you know, later in life, watch what you do with your life. Cause I, I wasn't able to uh, get a life insurance policy like the other three members of the group just cause I've had a, not yet, not yet. Just li- <laughs> I've had a little bit of a rocky past and, uh, some usage of, uh, illegal substances. So <laughs> they were less inclined to invest in me, I guess. Yeah. And it makes sense from their standpoint. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not faulting the company at all. Yeah. They've, they've got to take care of their back, you know? Oh, yeah. Just like I've got to take care of mine, but... I also did that where my my policy is over $100 a month more expensive than it needs to be because I got a tobacco rating because I, <laughs> I, yep. I told them that I smoked cigarettes and it, it, it <laughs> was a cigar. They the price up. Yeah. So it was... Uh, Honesty is definitely the best policy. However, in that case, I was ignorant. Turns out what I smoked was a cigar, and the way that I did smoke was just every few months. It's a celebratory cigar that is definitely allowed through the whole life policies. Yeah. And they won't change your rating. It'll still be a good rating. Huh, really? But if you do any nicotine products, um, vaping, smoking, anything like that, they will give you a tobacco rating. Yeah. But a celebratory cigar... They won't. And weed, they won't. Really? Yep. Weed, they don't care about. That's kind of cool. Yep. But cigarettes, carcinogenics, they care about. Well, yeah, it's killing you. Yep, so. Exactly. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Especially during COVID, they're a lot less likely to yeah, accept new people. Just a lot less lenient. You know, it's kind of up in the air right now with everything. So mm-hmm. it's been a little rough, but just stacking the money on the side and waiting for that it to open up a little bit. Yeah, and I'll jump in and throw a big chunk of, chunk of cash in there. Yeah, and if you are in a situation like Xavier where you can't get insured right now or maybe you just don't have the time right now, save up a chunk of change and you can start with a chunk of change and then go from there. Mm-hmm. And that'll get you extra death benefit, start you with some cash value, all that jazz. Yep. Yep, so, yep, yep. Yeah. I got, I got a map pulled up of... Of the, what the housing mar- market's going to look like or what it's predicted to look like of, like, how many people are going to be evicted and all that stuff. Uh-huh. I mean, I, yeah, I'll just show you guys. It's pretty we'll crazy. We'll try to explain it to the listeners. <laughs> you already know I'm not good at that. Here. <laughs> well, Utah is the lighter color the better. Uh, it doesn't yeah, look so bad. D- Delaware is the best off, but at the bottom it shows how many people are expected to be evicted. So it's got to be high state. in, like, California, Jesus right? Christ. Yeah, Texas is 700-something thousand. Good. Cali Ooh. was what, five or 600. I wonder why Texas is more. Okay. Um, so it says, maybe. says there's uh, 17 million people who are not current or on rent or mortgage payments. How is there that many people? And it's That's predicted insane. that 5.7 million people are likely to lose their homes in the next two months. That is insane. So, like we were saying, there's going to be some very interesting things in the market. You don't want a 401k. (laughs) If you have a 401k, I'm not a financial advisor, but if I had one, I'd be taking my money out. (laughs) (laughs) Get out now. (laughs) It costs you 10% and taxes, but good Lord. You're going to see a lot of people losing their shirts and their pants. Everything, mm-hmm. <laughs> their food, and, and starving them. Pretty sure, yeah. There's already been two million people that have starved in like third world countries and all that. And an estimated what was it? Two hundred. I thought it was estimated two million. Oh, and there's been oh, two hundred thousand deaths. I could be wrong, but that's what I, th- <laughs> I thought. I thought it was two hundred. Uh, Let me see. Two hundred's a lot more than two. Two hundred million. <laughs> that's what he says. No he way. Uh, I, yeah, it could be way off. I don't know. How much food they grown in Africa? How much corn they got there? That's what I'm <laughs> saying. The third world countries are going to be the most affected. Yeah. 
they already don't got enough food. Yeah. Yeah, it's especially if food's running out in some places in like New York and stuff. I, I'm pretty sure I've heard that like grocery yeah. stores are. That's not going to Africa before the U.S. Yeah, people are starting to it's, abandon California. It's yeah, all like too crazy. locked down. Yep. Same with New York. Wow. They lost yeah. like 50% of their millionaires. Gone. Yeah, I believe like it. first two months of COVID, they're like, we're out. Good. <laughs> we're leaving. Good. Yeah. Even Joe Rogan moved. Like, nope. California's not cool anymore. Yeah, Tesla moved. I'm out of here. And... Ben Shapiro moved, and all of them. Ben moved, too? Yeah, he moved to Tennessee. Whoa. Was he in Cali? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. okay. There's a Dang. bunch of companies that said, uh, not anymore, California. Yeah. I can't, I can't find the direct information at this second, but... Either way, it's I'll a lot looking. of people. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people be starving because yeah. supply chain problems. Yes. <laughs> okay. No. One way or another, this market's in for a, a doozy of a ride. This is why we need capitalism, people. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's very interesting. Without, with a, if we went to a gold and silver standard, I've I've read quite a bit about it. There wouldn't be boom and bust cycles because you can't take more credit than uh, is available. Than is available. Hmm. Yeah. So you can only if you have a set amount, a set currency, you have a certain amount of credit you can take. Even if it's like, yeah, it's backed by one tenth or whatever, then there's still a set valuation. Right. Without a set valuation, it's nothing to back it up. Goes into infinity, and crashes. Goes into infinity, crashes. <laughs> that's the that's the cycle. Mm. And we've had quite a few crashes since we were taken off the sil- the gold and silver standard in seventy one. Yep. So it's uh and we were put on it. I believe we were put on the gold and silver standard right after the Great Depression, I believe. Wasn't Are it? We? I have no clue. Well, don't quote me on that one. We will talk about that one later. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, gold and, gold and silver standard would be awesome. Um, what I think will be more likely to happen is when when there's a huge correction, then try to do the, uh, the whole cashless society stuff. Society stuff, yeah, which would suck. Yeah. But hopefully we can, hopefully we can get her done and not, not struggle too hard. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what but happens. For now... Um, whole life policies for the win. Get them if you can. If you can't, save up some money like Zave's doing, um, and then watch the market because yeah. it's gonna be very interesting soon. <laughs> it's it's hard to know yeah. what to put your money into right now. It's just kind of like okay, I just gotta save everything because yeah, that's what it might everything start, is gonna start go. Start the safe option. Yeah, Insane. exactly. Start start researching and watching videos on it all. It would be very very beneficial. Like. Learn about their dividend percentages, things like that. You can tell if a stock is overpriced or underpriced, if they have dividends. Um, and then options, those have been fun to play with. But, yeah. Okay, it says in the UN, the UN's World Food Program, whoever they are, um, they need $5 billion to prevent 30 million people from starving to death. Um, according to the agency, some 135 million people around the world face acute f- food insecurity before the pandemic and the number is expected Meaning to Meaning they don't know where year. their next meal is going to come from, I think, is what that means. Yeah, probably. So that before the pandemic. Yeah, and they said it's expected to double. <laughs> okay, so you were... So, I mean, it's so just... So Logan wasn't wrong. A lot of <laughs> no. people are going to just get toasted. Yeah, Jesus geez. Christ. Ooh. That's brutal. All right. Anyways, if you put your money in whole life policies, that shouldn't happen to you. Yeah. Yeah. You're <laughs> not going to starve to death. <laughs> I don't starve to death because then you'll be able to take your cash value out. <laughs> you know, buy guns and animals. You can hunt too. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I saw a post that I, I was wondering if I should post this, but it said, uh, should should uh, growing your own food be taught in schools? Like as oh, just yeah. a like life yeah. skill. I think yep. that should for sure. Just like taxes right. should. Yeah. Yep. And balancing your budget. Every yep. <laughs> yeah, everything but what they're teaching. All the important <laughs> things for entrepreneurs <laughs> would be awesome. Yeah. The reason they don't teach these things is because schools are designed to create good employees. Yeah. That's it. That's that's a long it's podcast. I know. Oh yeah. Okay. That's another. We'll, we'll one not altogether. talk about that. <laughs> we should add that on the list though. By the way, uh, there's a very very interesting topic that I forgot to bring up: the COVID vaccine has been 
um, patented by a Rothschild. Oh, really? Really? They're just very wealthy. Very, very, very it's wealthy. A, it's a really wealthy family. So the Rothschild is a very old family, one of the oldest known families that started profiteering off of wartime, like oh. as an art. Instead of instead of just like you know kings throwing money and winning, these Rothschilds would throw money on both sides and just profit, and they they're they just done having good. fun. They're just playing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I, I thought Bill Gates was with it too. The he vaccine. May, he may be that he was the vaccine. Bill Gates was. There's weird shiz with him. I know there's like lots yeah, of conspiracies he, about. Yeah, him. he said he wants to. He wants everything to be shut down until 2022. Like all the small businesses. But if we want to get into COVID, you'll get into We don't want to get into COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Not tonight. <laughs> um, There's so much to say. I know. But hold up. I have to say this. Okay. Out of 20,000 people, it was 128 or 138, one of those two, that went into anaphylactic shock from the vaccine. <laughs> okay. That, that's death. That's equal to death. So now, well, I mean, if you don't treat it. Yeah. But now you're required... Um, if they're administ- administering the COVID vaccine, they have to have a resuscitation kit in the building. It's required now. <laughs> Wait, and where? what? And for, co- if you for the COVID vaccine, mm-hmm. they now have to have their resuscitation kits. Um, just in case, you know, just, they just expect <laughs> you to be toasted. Wait, okay, so what's the percentage out of that? So 138 out of 20,000. Is that a higher chance of getting dead from, from the I'm vaccine than COVID? Than COVID? Let's see that here. sounds yeah, correct. Like it to me. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's incredible. And some quick a, math on this. COVID's like no, it's quite a bit less. It's point zero zero six four percent. Okay, but let's like it. I would. I would okay, rather still. take a ninety nine point nine percent chance with COVID. I would honestly. Too. <laughs> honestly. And it, uh, apparently, you have to stay an hour after you get the vaccine. That's not the counting droopy too. face. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we don't want sad faces. Yeah, there was a lot of them. Half of their face went dead. It looks like it's you're like, getting a stroke. Fu- yeah. I mean, so take it at your own risk. Whatever. So this vaccine was given emergency clearance to be distributed, um, whereas the regular vaccine has to go through years of trial and error and mm-hmm. FDA approval with all these regulations. Um, they're they're skirting around the regulations. There's a reason medicine needs to be tested. <laughs> they still don't yes. have a vaccine for flu. But under a year, we can get one for COVID? Yeah. <laughs> Correct. And it's all safe. It's it's an emergency, so it's okay. It, it, you see what I posted with Trump, right? Yeah, Trump's like, yeah, I'm no. not going to get it, and neither is any of my staff yet. Let me just <laughs> read it. <laughs> I've seen a lot of those where people are like, okay, we'll get the vaccine if you get it first. Yeah. <laughs> this is directly what Trump said. He no. says, this is on Facebook, people working in the White House – should receive the vaccine somewhat later in the program unless specifically necessary. I've I've asked that this adjustment be made. I'm not scheduled to take the vaccine, but look forward to doing so at the appropriate time. Thank you. Mm. What? I'm He's just, like, I'm not dying. <laughs> yeah, I don't want the vaccine, but you, you guys take it. Trump, I like you, but what's up? I'm just not going to take it, period. No. Or no. Catch, catch me in jail. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's going to be aggressive. All of a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> no droopy face. Whatever, no. until they force you to give it to you in jail so the other prisoners don't get it. That's what would happen. Suicide by police. <laughs> 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 I don't want it. I mean, they yeah. said if you have major food allergies or major allergies and just don't take it, the UN did. We don't care about the UN. I'm not going to lie. I, yeah, have, well, I, have, I have major allergies. liveritis, so. <laughs> yeah. I'm American. I it's love my allergy. That. Sorry. Did you guys see that the the Supreme Court decided not to go with uh the Texas suing? There was other a couple states? lawsuits. Yeah. That they're like, nah. And from what I was reading tonight, the Electoral College has officially decided on Biden. No, it's yeah, but February they're still 16th. doing. Oh, is it? That's oh, the last okay. day. No, Jesus that, Christ, thank the Lord. Like that. That, that was a deal. It was posted by oh. Ben Shapiro and all that. Oh, really? But. I don't know how they could do that when, yeah, it's not the official date, even though they did bring it forward, the electoral date. I don't know why they sprung it forward to where it might be legit. Yeah. Um, but let's just hope it's not. There's still lawsuits going on, so how could they do that legally? Well, the attorney general for Texas sued the other states because they cheated, you know, and he is like, well, listen, if they're cheating, it's not valid. Overturn the cheating votes. And they said no, but there was 20 other states that were going to jump on with them. 
It they they gar- were on with guaranteed him. eighteen, possibly more. Mm. The, that were the, like, this is some BS. Today, the, and they were the, like, nah. The Nevada GOP uh, put in for Trump. So like the Republican senators or whoever the hell it is, the votes went for Trump today in Nevada. Okay. I don't know what that means for us, but here we are. <laughs> it, <laughs> here we is. It's some stupid things. I don't know. It's, it's so confusing and yeah, yeah. <laughs> politics stuff. Whole nother podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you stop recording? No. Uh, <laughs> we haven't ended. Not yet. Yet. <laughs> yeah, we still got. We still got to end it out. Uh, basically, whole life policies are awesome for um, opportunity funds. They're great for retirement funds. They're great for life insurance, um, and they provide uh, a lot better returns and dividends than a bank account would, which is generally 0.01 to 0.03 percent uh, for a typical savings account. If you're doing like a money money market account, you can get a little more, but it's not it's not considerable. Um, also, if you have any questions, you could probably email us and we could help you out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or serious. at least do our yeah. best to help you out. We know a guy. Yeah. Yes, we <laughs> yeah. do. <laughs> um, yeah, please please email us. We'll link our email, our Patreon. We'll link just everything. Yeah, yeah. all of it. Yep, we'll link it all <laughs> um, bottom of this video and let us know if you guys have any questions or concerns and we'll uh, get back to you as soon as possible thank you for listening once again oh, right. peace out we, we are out. doing the book too <laughs> yes oh, yeah, next week will be next week yeah next week's the power of habit yeah power of habit like right. subscribe do all that cool stuff yes Comment, please all that feedback's yep. cool yes yep. <laughs> bye <laughs> <laughs>